In Season 3, Episode 3 of Game of Thrones, a miracle happens to Podrick Payne. Tyrion gave Podrick a gift at Littlefinger's brothel for his loyalty at the Blackwater, a session with three of Littlefinger's best prostitutes. Podrick returns later and gives Tyrion back the money, and when Tyrion protests, Podrick replies that the prostitutes refused his money. After some questioning, it's revealed that the money was unaccepted because the virgin Podrick was so stunning in bed that the pleasure was worth more than the gold to the girls. This has become a legendary event in the show and in the fandom as well. Podrick has been hailed as the prophesied god of tits and wine Tyrion longed to meet. His member hypothesized to exceed even torments and given more titles than the king of Westeros for his noble deeds in bed. But are all those titles and accolades deserved? Is Podrick actually the Azor High of sex come again? I'm here to tell you, no. Podrick is not the Lord of Orgasms, instead a pawn in the game of chess that is King's Landing. The first thing to keep in mind with the prostitute's refusal to take Tyrion's money is the context of the episode this happens in. The episode The Walk of Punishment is after the battle of Blackwater. Tyrion has been demoted from Hand of the King to Master of Coin by the returned Lord Tywin. The reason Tyrion, Bronn, and Podrick are at Littlefinger's brothel is they are collecting the royal ledgers from the previous Master of Coin, Peter Baelish. We learn later in this episode that Littlefinger has been taking out enormous loans from Tywin Lannister, but also, more importantly, the vicious Iron Bank of Braavos. As Tyrion unravels the ledgers more, he eventually learns that Littlefinger has been spending most of the crown's money financing his own personal business ventures. What this means is that Littlefinger at this moment in the brothel is handing over proof of his corruption and possible crimes against the crown to Tyrion, one of the smartest people in King's Landing, and he has to do it smiling, knowing what enormous danger he is in if Tyrion catches on to his schemes. What he needs is a spy that will tell him exactly how much Tyrion has uncovered so that Littlefinger can evade justice. However, Littlefinger has no insights in Tyrion's inner circle at this moment. Now, let's go back to the sequence of events with Podrick. When Tyrion arrives, the first person he meets at Littlefinger's brothel is Ross, the prostitute from Winterfell that Tyrion had so much fun with in the first season. She attempts at charming Tyrion, then Pod, and is rebuffed by both. With the context above, with the danger Tyrion represents, having Roz front and center and working on Tyrion is a smart move from Littlefinger. He's attempting a honeypot on Tyrion, which is when you have one person feign sexual and or romantic interest in the hope that they will confide in your agent. Roz has a prior positive relationship with Tyrion and is an ideal candidate for this. The initial honeypot fails, but Roz's interest in Podrick as well is telling with what happens next. Let's look at the dialogue in this scene. I wouldn't take it, my lord. Maybe they're trying to curry some favor with the new master of coin. Have you ever known a whore to turn down gold? They were happy enough to take it when I gave it to them. What did you tell them? I didn't tell them anything. What did you do to them? Lots of things. And they seem to like these things? Yes, my lord. Of course they seem to like it. They're paid to seem to like it. Only they weren't paid. What are you saying? These ladies enjoyed him so much, they gave him the time for free. What we should be doing in this scene is listening to Braun. He is rightfully skeptical of Podrick's story. He guesses that the prostitutes were faking in an effort to get at Tyrion somehow. Then he asks if they pumped Pod for information. And finally note that great prostitutes are actresses. They can fake pleasure easily. Braun correctly identifies that even though Pod is only a squire, being a squire to Tyrion makes him valuable. If the girls can get Podrick to come back more and more, perhaps in between some wine and pillow talk, they can get useful information for Littlefinger. Even innocuous details such as Tyrion's mood or when he calls it a day as he begins analyzing the ledgers would be useful information. Tyrion, on the other hand, is ready to believe the girls were genuinely overwhelmed by Podrick's prowess almost instantly. He claims that because they didn't take his gold, they didn't get paid at all. He's overlooking that Littlefinger can pay the girls himself out of his own pocket in gold, favors, or advancement in his organization. It's like if you get a dinner on the house at a restaurant. The staff working your meal is still getting paid just by the owner instead of you. Same concept here that Tyrion doesn't even consider. Also, Tyrion is horribly biased in this exchange because he deeply wants to believe that prostitutes aren't motivated only by money. His first relationship with Taisha, which tragically is revealed as genuine, was one where Tyrion believed she loved him and he was told she was only a prostitute hired by his brother Jaime. And also with Shay, there is the same tension as Tyrion struggles with how much Shay actually cares for him. 
The things he is saying about Podrick's encounter are the things Tyrion tells himself constantly when he doubts Shay. Bronn, bereft of that internal conflict, sees the easy truth immediately that Podrick is being set up somehow. Tyrion also dismisses that the prostitutes were faking because Podrick claims he didn't say anything about his life or Tyrion. He shows this as evidence that they weren't interested in anything Podrick knows. However, there's an easy long game in Podrick believing he is amazing at sex, and then more importantly, spreading that rumor around. In the next episode, Kiss by Fire, Roz and Varys meet, and Roz tells the spider about Tyrion and Podrick. Is he very large? No larger than usual, apparently. And yet they said that he was... Extraordinary. The most extraordinary man they've ever had. And they've had a lot of men. We're talking about the same Podrick. Quiet boy in Lord Tyrion's service seems a bit simple. What did he do to them? I don't know, my lord. The girls are usually quite descriptive. So what did they say? They said it was hard to describe. The story being told is that Podrick is extraordinary, yet in not any specific way. Roz even notes how odd it is that the normally descriptive girls have no details. Later we see the rumors about Pod spreading. Random women are giggling appreciatively at Podrick as he runs by, when before he was invisible and looked down on. The long game here is less obvious, however it is planting the idea in Podrick's mind that now strangers are rightly interested in him sexually. He previously would be suspicious of advances given his low social standing and average looks, and is also suspicious of Littlefinger's girls. Now that he knows he has a reputation, the interest seems justified. What Littlefinger could do now is send one of his employees in disguise as a chance encounter and have Pod believe they are genuinely interested in him. It sounds a bit convoluted though, right? But not when you consider Littlefinger does the exact thing to Loras Tyrell with Olivar. Littlefinger sends his male prostitute Olivar to pose as a squire for Loras Tyrell and Seduces the Knight of Flowers. From then on, Littlefinger is a constant source of information inside the Tyrells that he exploits. Olivar even becomes privy to conversations between Loras and Marjorie. Part of the reason this works is that Loras believes it is reasonable that Olivar would be attracted to him, so he does not question the chance encounter and then becomes taken in by Olivar's act. With Podrick's sexual prowess buoying his self image, he too may be caught in a similar web. Why this plan doesn't work on Podrick is revealed in season 4. Podrick has been burying his nose in books instead, which he shows off by naming the banners of the Dornish houses as they arrive for Joffrey's wedding. Tyrion is one of the few lords that encourages their squires to learn and actively teaches the boy. Pod's work ethic and duties as a squire has rendered him unavailable for a continuation of the honeypot strategy. In the end, it was a gamble from Littlefinger that failed, but not at a high cost. Tyrion never realized what was happening, and all it cost Littlefinger was a small pouch of gold. It's clever writing and planning by the show writers that despite Tyrion's self-professed prowess at playing the Game of Thrones, he has a very large blind spot that can be exploited. There are games being played even above Tyrion's head, and he's nowhere near in control as he thinks. Also, the callback from Loras and Olivar allows the viewer to go back and see this scene, which was played for comedic effect, and reevaluate what is happening under Tyrion's nose. Tyrion is in far more danger and scrutiny from Littlefinger than he ever realized, and that the hole in his heart left by Tysha is where Tyrion is the most vulnerable. And that is the mystery of what Pod did in that brothel. Nothing special. Just another pawn being moved around the board by the real players in King's Landing.